In this video, we continue our discussion of limits in higher dimensions, and we talk about the two-path approach to show non-existence of a limit. While the definitions of limits and continuity for multivariable functions are nearly identical to those of their single variable counterparts, very different behavior can take place in the multivariable case. For example, limits in multivariable situations must be path independent. So what this means is that if a limit exists at a point, it must be the same limit along any path approaching that point. So what we can do is we can um, try to find two paths that go to the same point but create different z values for our function. So this is called the two path test for non-existence of a limit. So if a function f of xy has different limits along two different paths in the domain of f as xy approaches x0, y0, then the limit as xy approaches x0, y0 of f of xy does not exist. So notice that we're looking for two different z values, but the limit has to be approaching the same point. So both paths have to approach that same point. Also, you want to make a note that we cannot use the two-path approach to show that a limit does exist. So just because you find two paths that do give the same limit does not mean necessarily that the limit exists. We only use it to show non-existence. So you find two paths that do not produce the same z-value and that proves that the limit does not exist. In our example, we're asked to use different paths of approach to the origin to show that the limit does not exist. So we have the limit as xy approaches 0, 0 of xy squared over x squared plus y to the fourth. So we have to be somewhat careful in picking our paths. We want to pick two that will simplify the function in such a way that we can actually evaluate the limit fairly easily. So path one, I'm going to let x equal y squared. And the reason I'm going to do this is because if I plug in a y squared where the x squared is on the bottom, then I'll get y squared quantity squared. So I'll get y to the fourth plus y to the fourth in the denominator. So that will simplify our function quite a bit. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we have the limit as uh, y squared y approaches 0, 0, because remember x is y squared, of y squared times y squared on the top, and on the bottom y squared squared plus y to the fourth. Let's simplify this. So this is equal to the limit as y approaches 0 of y to the 4th over 2y to the 4th, which is the limit as y approaches 0 of 1 half, because those y to the 4ths cancel. And now I don't even have a y left, so that limit is obviously 1 half. So along path 1, x equals y squared, which does approach the origin as x and y approach 0, 0. Um, the limit of my function, or the z value of my function, is approaching 1 half. Now my second path, um, what we want to try to do is, remember, simplify the function. So I might try something like y equals x, you might not always get the answer that you're looking for on, this, on the first try. You might have to try out a few different paths. 
But for me, for path 2, I'm going to let y equal x. And when I plug that in, I get the limit as xx approaches 0, 0. And I'm gonna, everywhere I see a y, I'm going to replace with an x. So I get x times x squared on the top over x squared plus x to the fourth in the denominator. This is equivalent to the limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed over x squared plus x to the fourth. And this is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x cubed over, and in the denominator I'm going to factor out x squared, so I get 1 plus x squared left over in the denominator. So now I can do some cancellation. The x squared in the denominator has been factored out. It can cancel out two of the x factors in the numerator. So that leaves me with x to the first in the numerator. So I have limit as x approaches 0 of x over 1 plus x squared. And now I can actually plug in 0, because I won't get 0 over 0. I'll get 0 over 1, which is just 0. So both of these paths, x equals y squared and y equals x, approach the origin as x and y approach 0. But they produce different z values. And so what that's telling us is our function is doing something a little weird at the origin. The z values um, might be approaching 1 half from one direction and 0 from another direction. So our, your graph might have like a little wave curving up um, to 1 half when you come in along the path x equals y squared. So what this tells us is that um, as we approach 0, 0 along two different paths, the function approaches two different z values. So our conclusion, and this is important that you make the conclusion after you've found your two paths approaching two different z values, our conclusion is that the limit as xy approaches 0, 0 of xy squared over x squared plus y to the fourth does not exist, or DNE.